So glad to have you with us. Titans tonight. Presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, official bank of your Tennessee Titans. To learn more about all of Pinnacle's winning plays, go to TitansBanking.com. Pinnacle Financial Partners, member FDIC. Hello, Amy Wells. Hello, Mike Keith. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Hello, Keith Bullock. How's it going, everyone? Uh, it's good to see you. Great to see you. Now, I know the Mets are on tonight. Yeah, I'm not distracted yet. Because they don't play till after... Seven? Yeah, something like that. Okay. I'll be ready, though. Are you? <laughs> how, how are we feeling about the Mets tied 1-1 in the National League Championship Series with the Dodgers? I feel really good because they got thumped the first game. And, you know, being a Mets fan, I said, oh, it's just jet lag. <laughs> 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 but then the next game, uh, we jumped out on them, 6-0. I left my post where I was. And I told you, baseball, like I – Kind of, vet, I'm vested, right? So I'm sitting on the couch. Um, I go to the bathroom, mm. and then the Dodgers score three runs. So mm. you, you know, can't do that. Yeah, no, nah, I can't. Wherever I am, wherever I start watching the game, is where I need to finish. So we'll f- see what happens. Do you oh. do you believe in that sort of thing, Amy? Oh, absolutely. I'm crazy. Yeah, I can't. There, there are times during Titans games, especially now that I'm behind a computer again and like taking notes on a computer, if I'm touching the, <laughs> the keypad and things are going well, I am reluctant to move my hands. <laughs> until reluctant to even move your hand. I am very like, that's, it feels like <laughs> everything is going really well right now. I'm just going to freeze and wait I, because I don't want it to be me. But oh yeah, socks, outfits, Things I'm eating or like rituals, very much so. Yeah. So it's not so much. It's just um, like it's my the the, the Mets are my team, so I get into and it's very interesting. Like being a former player, um, I have no energy, no anything that I put into when I watch the Titans or you know what I'm saying. Um, Because you're more analytical about it. Yeah, and I just know that I put so much real emotion <laughs> into the game and I was a very sore loser so it's one of those things like yeah I'm cool you know but baseball it's fun um even like when my daughter plays volleyball like I don't get into the games like um I sit back I usually am listening to an audiobook or something like that because right. I did it the one time I did get into it and tried to be that dad like come on girls and like look it's it's youth sports and they don't play at a high level and there's a game they should have won and I just felt drained after the game and they lost and I'm like man I'm never doing that again it's just so much vested. but you will let yourself be a fan about baseball yes yes and I like it when we win so I talk crap you know I talk crap. <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah sure so it's all fun you know it's funny you'd say that though because uh, something that brings the fandom to mind to me is watching Bill Belichick on TV and listening to him on the radio. Yeah. What what I have found so interesting, first of all, I think he's really good. Yeah, I'm amazed at how good he I is. Think, I think he is really, really good. But what he lets go of now is all the coach thing from being, okay, I've got to stay right in the center lane. Mm -hmm. What he's doing now is he shows you how much he loves the game, how much he loves the NFL, how much – I mean, all of these things – I was listening to Jim Gray talk with him on uh, the podcast, Let's Go, Mm -hmm. and he was having some fun with Jim Gray, and they were going back and forth, and they were talking about things, and I'm just sitting here going, this is why I can enjoy him in this role – is because he loves it as much as I do, and and other people listening to us right now do, and and that's a special thing. And when he goes back to coaching later this year, or next year, he'll turn back into I don't right. know on uh-huh. to Cincinnati because yeah. that's the job. But he he's talking about players and other coaches and th- like the shot he took at the at the Jets the other night. Yep. 
Yeah. About he's a real person. Ready, <laughs> ready fire, aim, and mm-hmm. all. I mean, he, he, that's right. He's yeah. a real person. He's talking trash. He's he's into it. He he talks about players, and it's like, man, I love this guy because he did this, this, and this. It's really, it's refreshing. Well, yeah. I th- go ahead. No, please. I was gonna say, um, it's almost like not the same, but similar. You hear, um, you know, Coach Saban the similar mm-hmm. way because these men have won so much at the level they've played at and even have gone through the ranks as assistants, as position coaches. And, you know, after being around football in immersed in football for over 40 years, and then you have an opportunity to step back and just speak about it free flowingly. Right. It has to be gratifying because you don't have any tie to it. Like the memories of you being a kid or you scouting this person's father, or, you know, I remember when Bill, Belichick was speaking about, you know, the college all stars playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember and mm-hmm. Walter Payton being a senior, not even drafted yet, and you could tell, you know, he's running against the Super Bowl champions and his balance and his burst and his speed and like just talking the details of football that a lot of people that are listening to, if unless you're a football person, it's just ah, but us football people, we're like, whoa, like, you know, that's some um, good stuff because yeah. We see all that. We can analyze it the same way. But coming from Bill Belichick sounds a little different. You're right about Saban. He, I, I enjoy him a lot, too. I enjoy the stories. I enjoy the insight. I enjoy clearly how much fun he's having with it. it it's different. I think it's interesting to be able to see these people interact with something that they obviously love. And obviously it is a huge part of – the, just the way that they get enjoyment. It's their source of entertainment and fun and all of that thing. But when it's your job, you don't get to see the fan part of it. And as a person working in sports, you don't always get to engage with it in the same way that you do when you're just a fan of it, which KB is probably why you are able to just be a fan of baseball because football for so long was your job. Right. And so you see it in more of a a job way you see it a little more mm-hmm. analytical you see it a little bit more black and white well, it's gave, not he gave so much yeah to it. it's not the the fan experience is so different than the employee experience sometimes and that includes coaches and that includes players and everything so much of your existence relies on this play, this game, this moment, this, like all of that. And it's so intense and it's so overwhelming when you're in the middle of it to see someone like a Bill Belichick, like a Nick Saban, even like a Keith Bullock step away from it and be able to just be a fan of it. Mm-hmm. There's a whole new dimension of a human that you're seeing. And there's a whole new of appreciation for the game that they're allowing us to see because it's not so intense. Well, I like their historical knowledge. Yeah. I mean, they know things about the game that I don't have any idea about. Yeah. And it was, it's very similar to the experience that John Madden gave because Madden was so excited to be there. He was, he, he, there's a game going on and I'm going to get to talk about the game and da 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 da. da. And that whole, that whole part of Madden was what made him special as a broadcaster when he joined Pat Summerall and they did what they did. I think it's the same thing that we see from Tony Romo. Tony mm-hmm. Romo is a – now, listen, I, I know he can get a little ahead of himself, <laughs> but he's excited to be there, and yeah. there's a game, and I want to sh- tell, tell you what's going to happen and those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. People, people enjoy seeing that other side of people, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, <clears throat> even from – my standpoint when I get to uh, uh, speak about the game, you know, I speak to it from a space and look um, to give it a little insight why, you know, the fandom is different with football. It's like um, what Mike said, I gave so much. I mean, look, um, and, you know, I honestly feel <laughs> Like, um, that's why, like me and like the Titans fans are like as cool as we are, because. They they remember the times when we weren't winning, like when times weren't like great. And like I remember um, being like, yo, we might suck, but I don't suck. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't suck. And but that's my mentality. So that's why like on a. Well, you let them know you. Right. Right. I mean, you mm-hmm. you truly let them in 
to see who you were, and they knew that they know you. Well, and today, they know they know you. Yeah, like, look, I'm a New York. I, like, wear it on my sleeve. Like, Jim White and Paul Kaharski asked me a question about the game. I'm probably going to be – Honest by accident, maybe too honest by, <laughs> <laughs> by accident. I remember a couple of those. Right, but it's, yeah. the, it's the heat of the moment. That's just like how I'm feeling. Like when we lost to the Ravens, like, you know, the yeah. last play, like, that's how I, like, I'm, because in my mind, it's like, all right, we gave up 140 total yards on D, like, we were better than them. And that's me throwing a temper tantrum, throwing my helmet up the thing <laughs> and knocking the rails over it. But that's like true raw emotion. And what people always said, even when we were like 4 and 12, 5 and 11, you could see that I cared. Not that oh, that's yeah. what I was doing it for, mm -hmm. but that's just the little kid in me. Like, I'm a sore loser. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, so, and, and I, I'm sure you do too. And I know Amy does because I, I know her well in this way. And, and that is. I get where Titans fans are right now. 100%. I, t I totally understand the frustration. It's been, and, and I've said in, in interviews and things, part of this isn't just one and four. Part of this is seven of the last 29. And that's not fair to Brian Callahan because he wasn't here for, for all of that. And that's not fair to over half the player, probably three quarters of the players. <laughs> yeah. But – the fact of the matter is the fans are invested. They invest in the the team. They invest in the people. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, they are committed to this like you're committed to the Mets. And I get it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, I understand it. Now, I think there's some perspective that's a little different for this group of people. And I, 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 in terms of the coaching staff and the players, they're just here. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're I mean, new. You're, you're pulling up Buffalo right there, and mm -hmm. Buffalo's coach Sean McDermott is 82 and 49. That's considerably more games. <laughs> That's con well, and they got there and they had to build their thing mm -hmm. because when you do this, when you make these decisions to make these changes, then it's not. It doesn't automatically just get better when you change as much as they've changed. Yeah. And, and people don't want to hear it, and I understand, and yet it's Here, the truth. Yeah. I think, look, I don't know since when did, you know, sports become microwave, you know, microwave action. Like, okay, we got a new head coach. He has this new prolific passing offense. It's going to work right away. Who says who? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's one of those things where you have to get out there and see – what everything does because you might have to tweak this you might need something right here all right we got to add something to that or we just need to get this a little more out of this right here or you know it's like making a gumbo people always say it right. like you gotta add it's not done in 30 minutes there's no such thing as microwave gourmet food and in order to build a franchise up or you know um you know, I'm thinking college football. You build an organization. You know sure. what I'm saying? Building a yeah. program. That's just, yeah. you know, think Absolutely. of it like that. It's just easier. Because that's what essentially Coach Callahan is trying to do. He's trying to build a program, and it has to have a foundation. And one of those things are, all right, you're looking – as a fan, you're looking, what is it? It's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. It's only the, something that the team can decide because the team has to eventually um, figure out who they want to be. Who are we? Like, what is our identity? Um, you know, until our young quarterback gets right is the defense. is We're just going to kick ass and take names and just play that physical and, you know, keep it close and all of those different things. Is that what it's going to be? But I think it's more so – and it's tough because as players, you get put in a situation where <laughs> you just finished the game, did not go well, and how do you feel like you played? And it's like 10 minutes after the game. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's always tough. So that's why I say it's easier to do less talking. And I'm not saying anyone is doing a lot of sure. talking. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. saying for, as a player, it's easier to do less talking, look at the man in the mirror, and figure out how you're going to be a bright spot in a dull situation. Well, it's like if Calvin Ridley had said what he had said in 1999, 
<laughs> people would have lost their ever loving mind. Yes, one hundred percent. Because this was not a pro town. They didn't. They didn't get it. The response now was it spicier? To use your gumbo reference, was it <laughs> was it spicier than what you normally get? Absolutely. Yep. Was he happy? No. But Keith Bullock conditioned them. And Chris Johnson conditioned them, and Albert Hainsworth conditioned them, and so on and so forth, that sometimes people say stuff, and it's pretty blunt. Yeah. Because they and, – and if I'm a fan, that's kind of what I want to hear if it's not going well. Because you don't want people – even if it's a bit of a retool, as this certainly is, one in four is not acceptable. Yeah. Brian Callahan doesn't think it's acceptable. Nobody in the locker room does. And the players, in getting that across to the fan base, I would think in some ways that's reassuring, right? Yeah, I think I think that anger and emotion, and Brian Callahan talked about this a little bit on his Monday Night Radio show, everybody being angry and that frustration and those reactions are not a, a, a symptom or a symbol of – trouble right. in the locker room. Dissension. Yeah, this is proof that these guys care. This is proof that we are working towards something. This is proof kind of that it's working. This team is forming in front of us. And is it a pretty thing to watch? Not always. No. Is it like really fun all of the time when you are building the foundation of something? Not always. But you have to go through all of these parts to end up with the 82 and 49 mm-hmm. record. You have to go through all of these parts to have back to back to back to back to back winning seasons, which we've seen before. It, it, you have to go through all of the steps. You can't skip them. You just can't. When you build a program, there are messy parts. There are parts of figuring out what pieces you need, what things you need to tweak. Does this system work? Does this not work? Oh, my gosh. It's football, so sometimes people get hurt. You have to adjust for that. How is this team going to overcome that? These are all things that need to be figured out to establish the foundation of a program. And free agency can put you over the top in baseball. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, but in the NFL, it not is the same. it's not a quick fix. It's not. I I also believe free agency. When you're a free agent and you've been places and you've had the experience and you won, you know, the part of that them bringing you here is to bring, to be a leader to show people mm-hmm. a way of how to do those things. So with that being said, um, you know, I'm obviously not in this locker room at all. But you know, I think about. The roles that the guys that came in as a free agent were playing on their respective team, they weren't asked to be vocal. They weren't they haven't had to be leaders of what it um, takes when you're building a new franchise, like when you're building, when you're rebuilding, you come into a rebuild situation. My situation, my best example, Kevin Mawai, savvy vet. He's good to go. Then you get um, David Thornton and a Chris Hope. Chris Hope wasn't an instant leader. He had a younger. Um, he lo- certainly wasn't in Pittsburgh, right? Exactly. He was. He was brought here just like David was yep. to take the next step. Yep. Because in the Indianapolis locker room, it was Peyton Manning and Bob Sanders and Cato June, Cato and- June and Marvin Harrison and yeah. Dallas Clark and all these guys. In Pittsburgh, Chris was a good player, but they had all kind the bus yep. and. Mm-hmm. Roethlisberger. And but he Heinz learned. He, he learned. learned to become a leader through those guys, just like David Thornton learned to become a leader through those guys. Just like Lejarius Sneed, I'm sure learned to become a leader through the Chris Jones and the Patrick Mahomes, as well as um, um, um man, Quandre Diggs. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Wait, know what I'm saying? At, at, I think it's a great point because here's Cushion Barry taking a leadership role really for the first time in his career because now he's got a free agent contract. You're seeing a Quandre Diggs come in. He's had some of that because he's been in the league for 10 years, but Murray has an at linebacker. Right. Now he is. Jones has an at linebacker. Now he is. This is a really great point that you make that it's – those guys are having not only learned to play but to take a different role right. – 
in other places, and that takes some time. And it's not easy coming into – this is a foreign land to them. Like, yeah, big, bad football players, we're going to get it done on the field, but more comes to it as you progress in your career. You understand? Um, like uh, – uh, Murray, um, midpoint mm -hmm. year four, five, six, wherever he's at, he's had leaders on his team. He might not have had to have the, the the biggest voice. I don't care if you wear a C on your chest. That doesn't make you, you know, necessarily a leader. It might sometimes be the best look and or there might be loud, louder voices in that locker room where you could just be like a rah-rah guy. You don't have to really have real input. And I think at this point with these Titans and these new influx of players, they need to – these younger guys and even some of the guys that have been here, I think they need to – I'm not saying that they haven't been seeing it. I think now is the time where, you know, because we didn't start off great when we had Mawai and no. Chris. You know, it, it, took, oh, it took a minute. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? And then it became a time where C. Hope brought some of his Pittsburgh stuff in and D David Thornton brought yep. some of his stuff from Indianapolis that made them good teams. And then, you know, we just kind of kept mixing that pot and then eventually it got right. You have to start with a good roux, right? Yeah, <laughs> isn't that Just, what they and say? Hey, and it that takes a while. You gotta say, keep. Yeah. You gotta keep. You gotta stirring keep stirring it. it. But can't let the, it sit. But that's the foundation mm -hmm. of of anything. That's a soup. Is that's what yeah. Amy was saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. got to. Don't let it burn. Don't let it burn. <laughs> Don't let it burn. The whole thing's done. All right, mm -hmm. more coming up. More good conversation. We'll talk to, uh, Titans and Buffalo in our next segment. Amy Wells, Keith Bullock, Mike Keith. This is Titans Tonight, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. Titans Tonight, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio with Keith Bullock, Amy Wells, and me, Mike Keith. I'm pulling up the injury report for today. Of course, Wednesday begins the practice week, so there is an injury report. Um, what's interesting about the injury report today if you consider injury reports interesting, which I we do. do. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, because the Bills played Monday night, mm. they had a walkthrough today. So mm. theirs is like the, the estimate. assumed, that's yes, it. Yes, and so th I'm not even going to read that to you. That's not even really real. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like 85 names well, on there. Yeah, what happened? Well, I'm sorry. I don't okay. mean to, That's you okay. know. No, because please. It's your show. I feel like, you know, they got they pulled a banana and tailpipe on us last week because oh, Michael Indy Pittman. Did? Joe, yeah, mm -hmm. like how do you be on IR and then you're not? And then, and then uh, the how whole, does that work? The whole Anthony Richardson thing. Yeah. Too? yeah. That's, banana Is that something new? Like. Uh, what they did? Yeah. Oh, no, that's not new. Oh. I mean, that's uh, a little trickeration. Yeah, that ah. that is called strategy, my that, friend. I, I mean, I'll tell you what was interesting. <laughs> How Adam Schefter. Oh, that, that got, see, got. See, that's the thing. Schefter got got. A lot of those guys and girls and national, local, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be the first. Well, but they're but they were all given that information from somebody, and it mm. and it didn't come from Bob at True Value. No, <laughs> I, I mean it, it's it, it, <laughs> it didn't come from a fantasy team. No, no. <laughs> no. they no. were they were given that information from somebody who wanted it out that wow. Michael Pittman was, was that's that's big. Well, Hoodwinked. because we said that on Wednesday. But yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it, if you're it game out. planning. If you're game planning, uh, anyway. Well, we talked about it consistently. Mm -hmm. We talked about it with you. We talked about it with Coach Mack on the OTP the next day. Mm -hmm. the The whole thing that was really key is, I mean, if he doesn't play, I mean, he made the two plays in the fourth quarter that won, yeah. that, they won, him for. that won the game. <laughs> yep. And and then they had the whole Richardson thing all week. Did they do anything illegal? No. <laughs> Okay. They did. They did not violate any rules of the injury report. They just. They're just like kind of like straddled that New England Patriot line. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was even a little. This is like an uh, like a. How you got Adam like Schefter on code. your payroll? Well, but, Adam yeah. Schefter's on payroll, bro. No, <laughs> I, I think Adam Schefter got got. I'm gonna tweet Adam Schefter like, yo, bro. I, what happened? Sit I'd this week out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Adam could be if he was now. See, if you're in his role. You can't say anything mm -mm. Mm -hmm. because you just have to go, okay? And because there will be other stories. There will be bigger stories. Mm. There will be things. We don't believe you. You need more people, Adam. Well, but 
I mean, he'll they'll come back to him with something he needs. Somebody will come back to him with something he needs. There will be a – how that sort of thing works is there will be a payback, which will make everybody feel better. That's – when when I used to do well, that for a – Inside baseball. Yeah, when I used to do that for a living, I, I mean, that's a hard life to live. <sighs> but I will say this. You crossed some people. Right. And – Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't, but it's one day it might. Well, one day it's very possible you're not going to get a lot of sympathy from somebody when something happens because you made them look bad the weekend of October 13th. Well, look, just say it. Let me ask you this. All right. Is Amari Cooper playing? Do we know that? (laughs) So here's what's great (laughs) because he just got traded to Buffalo, if y'all didn't know that. Yes. The GM said in an appearance somewhere he was, the head coach today oh, said he Lord. wasn't sure. Oh, Lord. He's playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mari Cooper's playing. If All I'm right. him, I'm playing. I could go run the route tree. Yep. Oh, wait, and he can too. Absolutely. He's a smart guy. All right, so here's the Titans injury report. And we know this is fact. This is actually from the team. Yes, this is from the Tennessee Titans to my email inbox. Uh, De- defensive lineman Keandre Colburn out with a knee. S- doesn't sound like he's playing this week. Doesn't appear that way. Yeah, no. so that would be two weeks. Yep. Uh, today was a rest day for DeAndre Hopkins, for Kenneth Murray, and for Jeffrey Simmons. Mm-hmm. So no surprise there. Not odd. No. Ernest Jones was out today with an illness. Legereus Sneed did not practice with a quad. Tajay Spears did not practice with a hamstring. They brought in Joshua Kelly, who used to play from the Chargers, and signed him to the practice squad. He's a good-looking back. Um, Traylon Burks, knee. Will Levis was limited due to the fact that uh, I would guess the shoulder's a little sore after Sunday. Oh, yeah. I mean, he said it in his media availability. This is not a – he's not cured. Right. (laughs) Well, and – It's still a thing. And he had 13 days off between the night he got hurt and the night he played. Mm -hmm. And then it's three days since he just played. So, so he was limited. Probably doesn't feel good. Cedric Gray, trying to come back from the uh, shoulder injury off the IR, was a full participant today. So, the Titans did hold a normal practice. Buffalo home for the first time in a month. Uh, just to walk through today. Mm-hmm. Keith, um, Am- Amari Cooper and what he gives them, I'm sure I'm, – I, well, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I'm guessing you watched their game with the Jets on Monday night? Yeah, I watched um, I watched it. Yeah. I, yeah. They, <laughs> no, I yeah. mean, like, I, I definitely watched it, but I wasn't tuned in like I tuned into a Titans game. Right, I get it. Right. But I, I don't think there's any doubt – that Amari Cooper is the perfect fit for what they need in this offense right now. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I say that, and I agree with you, um, simply because, you know, right now their wide receiver their wide receiver core is, is young. They're still developing. You know, um, Amari Cooper, this will be his third team, I believe. Yep. And This is actually his, the third time he's been traded. Well, and, and I don't think it's his – go ahead, Amy. Well, okay, so that's perfect because I was just to ask. I was just about to ask why has he been traded so much? Is it just, just kind of how the cookie has crumbled for him in his career, or is there is there a thing? I think. Look, um, his why first is he stint, <laughs> his first stint in in the Raiders with the Raiders. I'm not. I don't have the stats in front of me. I can look them up. He played well. He did. He's been a thousand yard receiver with the cow with the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. He was a thousand yard receiver with um, Cleveland. So this is actually his fourth t- team. Um, that being said, what you think, Jimmy Garoppolo? Whatever, Oakland. You know what I mean. I think he might have had some of David Derek Carr as well. He did. Yeah. Um, and then you go. You know, I kind of look at the quarterbacks because if he's able to produce with the quarterbacks, and I just think Deshaun Watson is just having a a god-awful year for whatever the reasons may be, but that's where Amari Cooper is being traded from now. So obviously the Cleveland Browns um, have an inkling that they want to get some more draft picks and they got a stockpile, however they're going about it. So he was traded the first time from Dallas – from Oakland to Dallas, mm-hmm. and the the Raiders got a good haul. 
He was traded the second time from Dallas to Cleveland because Dallas had receivers that they – younger receivers they were going to pay. Did named, they have a money – a cap issue? Yeah, and, and – Am I remembering but they, that? But, you know, in those cases, you often make decisions. We're going to pay C.D. Lamb. Yeah. yeah. We're going to pay these other guys. And, you know, the, at that time, you know, they were coming out of the Ezekiel Elliott thing. Mm, yeah. And I don't, yeah. I don't know what he did, like, in the game last year, but I remember us getting ready for Cleveland, and we were big on Amari Cooper because he was performing well. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. He had his best game of the year against oh, us. Wow. And yeah. he had – uh, sure. My bad. No, not, <laughs> sure. your, not your bad. I mean, he can go deep. He can go short. He can go medium. There's still some value there. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. I mean, 7,000-yard seasons. Holy smokes. I mean, he's he's so good at what he does. Now, he's traded in this situation for a, a totally different reason, and that is he's in the last year of a deal. He's incredibly reasonable for – the Browns to be able to trade off and for the Bills to be able to accept. And, uh, I mean, the Browns have obviously got some very hard decisions to make. Um, they're, in a, they're in an odd place, and I don't, I don't think there is anyone more surprised outside of Cleveland's ownership and management than we are in Nashville. Because when we saw Deshaun Watson in Houston – he, Crazy. He ate our lunch. Yeah. And the other thing, too, his best game the whole time he's been in Cleveland was, was that game us. last year against us. And so, you know, he sat out for nearly two years. And, you know, there I was listening to someone talk on Sirius XM Satellite Radio about it. They don't like the system he's in for him. And I thought it was interesting uh, because this was somebody very knowledgeable and I don't know as much about it, but I, whatever it is, it is it is not working in Cleveland for Deshaun Watson, and I am stunned. It feels bigger than a system, right? I think like, so. This feels like like wholesale. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. It looks bad. It looks really <laughs> it bad. Does it looks bad. <laughs> it looks. It looks like. Um, doesn't look like a, a great football product when you do tune ins and I know you guys are busy, but I have um you know, I do Titans and then what's it? Red Red Zone. Red Zone. Mm-hmm. Scott Hansen, Syracuse guy. Um everybody really? in broadcast is a Syracuse guy. <laughs> but um Syracuse? so I I and then On you national just, TV you just see the um you just hmm. see the series. You know what I'm saying? And it's Deshaun Watson. So mm-hmm. it's like you expect way more. You should, you expect, like you look at him as a as a playmaker, and then like um, not making plays, mm-hmm. you know. So I, so I'll go to agree with you because what I do know is, even on his worst day, Vince Young will make a play for him. Oh, yeah. He could make a play. Mm-hmm. Like even if he's having a bad game, you Vince Young is a type of quarterback for three quarters on defense. We'll be on it like, man, what the hell is VY out there doing? <laughs> what is that? But, like, that's how I know you keep these games close. Man, four court VY out there dealing, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. So that's that's what it's about, being able to make plays, like forget about the next play, the next play. Like go on to the next play as hard as that may be. Some people are just gamers and can make that stuff happen. You know, and I think that – Right now with the Titans, they need to find out who their gamers are because it's a matter of, look, this is our game plan. This is what we're going with. It's week six, seven, guys, everybody knows what to do. We're all professionals. And just go out and give your best shot. Like, how do, how do they play when they don't have seven penalties? Or, you know, how do they right. play when they're not turning the ball? Like, play the most perfect game that you haven't played yet this year. And let's see what the outcome is after 60 minutes. We need a break. Titans tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, continues on Titans Radio. Thanks very much, Rhett Bryan. Titans at Buffalo on Sunday. Rhett Bryan and the whole gang with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central. Kickoff set for 12.02 Central from Highmark Stadium. And they are like us. They, so we're going to have new Nissan Stadium. The Bills are going to have new Highmark Stadium. 
I think it's cute to just call it new old stadium name. I can, I kind of like it. It's like 2.0. Just go with the same. Well, I mean, they had to. They well, had to they had to, do to the like same pay thing. for it, and yeah, I and mean, it's have a little a, more expensive. So, yeah, yeah. It's kind no, of a I thing. think it's great, but I also just think it's cute. I think it's nice. I mean, will they have? I don't know. <laughs> Nissan Stadium. 2.0. Right. Well, you know what they oh. will? Oh, this is Jacksonville, right? No, I was no, talking about Buffalo. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. They won't have a roof. I know that. They, are no. not, they do not want a roof. They are preserving the, the Buffalo-ness. Is that? No. So It's down the street. Let me ask mm-hmm. you. Sure. Because you would know. Okay. Green Bay yes. mm-hmm. is the frozen tundra. What is Buffalo? Just cold. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like yeah. they got somebody has to come up with something because well, it's something because them swirling. If you've never, it's crazy. Like, like it is crazy, Mike. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, their whole thing. So they don't have the frozen tundra, the cheeseheads. They have embraced Bill's mafia. Yeah, well, they're crazy. That's their thing. They yeah, are great fans. Like, they are great fans, but they are extreme. So you have the his regular first pro fans. game was there. Yeah. Then you have the extreme fans, and Bill's Mafia is like kind of up there with the Raider Nation extreme fans. Putting uh, people through tables that are on fire. Yeah, but like, okay, so Raider Nation, their whole thing is just kind of like the, ah, like they're very Uh, aggressive and intense, and it's loud, and they're. You don't think Steelers ah. fans are like that? Yes. No, Steelers fans have a different thing. Steelers fans, I think, are a little more on the ornery (laughs) side. (laughs) What about Cincinnati fans? And they're also loud. Cincinnati fans are a whole different animal. Buffalo fans fans. are like dangerous somehow. Yeah. It's like a bunch of stupid human tricks all in one stadium. It's, it's. Well, they're, they're into it, man. As Mike said, have you ever been to Buffalo? Yes. Man, spend some time there. There's not much going on. I don't spend a lot of time there. But they, I mean, at Highmark Stadium, there's something going on. I mean, even Mm. when they weren't very good and we weren't very good and we were going up there to play them. They were still like totally into it. Mm-hmm. It's a great fan base. Yep. Like they're very brain involved. <laughs> the brain brain freeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got it going now. I mean, so we mentioned Sean McDermott's been there long enough. He's now coached 131 games. Did you do that math in your head just now? I did. Wow. And um, when you've when you've done that, you have stability. Brandon Bean is the general manager. Mm-hmm. They've got draft classes. They have people from. I mean, Josh Allen was the seventh pick in the 2018 draft. Deion Dawkins, one of their starting offensive linemen, was their third round pick, or late second round pick in 2017. So when you start to stack these guys up out of draft classes, and they're still on your team, it's always less expensive to pay your current players a new contract than it is to go out and sign somebody in the in the free market. So you get them earlier. You can lock them in earlier. Ab- absolutely. Because as rookies, you usually want to stay with mm-hmm. the team that drafted sure. you. Sure. If you get that opportunity, um, that's what's going to happen. Well, the Bills um, so far have not been like crazy good on offense. They're averaging 310 yards per game, but they've only turned the ball over twice. Twice in six games. Both of those were Josh Allen fumbles. He has not thrown an interception this year in 156 passes. As Troy Aikman pointed out on Monday Night Football, he's thrown some balls that maybe should have been intercepted, but the fact is he has not been intercepted. Wow. James Cook, who did not play in the Monday Night win over the Jets, is their leading rusher, the former Georgia Bulldogs, 70 carries for 309 yards. Amari Cooper comes in and is already their leading receiver with 24 catches for 250 yards. Their second leading receiver is the second-year tight end, Dalton Kincaid. Like Tim. Yes, yeah. from Utah. Mm-hmm. 21 catches, 217 yards. Khalil Shakir, in his third year, has 20 catches. And the rookie out of Florida State, Keon Coleman, 12 catches for 201 yards and two touchdowns, so he's averaging nearly 17 yards a catch. Wow. And I think um, Amari Cooper <clears throat> complements that well. Perfect. He gets in there and does whatever he needs to do at this point of his career. So we played him in the first game after he was traded to Dallas. Hmm. 
Mm, what, so, down there on Monday Night Football? Yeah, so he gets yeah. traded to Dallas, and his first game was against the Titans. How did he do? Five catches, 58 yards, and a touchdown. We'll take that minus the touchdown. Right, but I, I'll say this too. They would take that right now too. Yeah, no, for sure. Because they, they need – because Coleman's going to be fine and Shakir's banged up, but he's a good player. Kincaid's a good tight end. Uh, Dawson Knox – is an un, an <laughs> underutilized player right now mm-hmm. on defense. Um, AJ Epinesa and Gregory Russo have three sacks. Um, they got a bunch of guys with interceptions, led by Jamarcus Ingram with two. They're just playing good football. They beat Arizona. They won big at Miami. They beat Jacksonville. They lost big at Baltimore. They lost a game at Houston. They probably shouldn't have lost. And then they won at the Jets on Monday Night Football. So they've been on the road three straight games, and they're coming home for the first time in a month this Sunday. Yeah, that's, that's the a opponent. lot. That's exhausting. Hmm. Good. That was a good overview, Mike. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. I think yeah. I need a break. No, Fi- <laughs> okay. Final break. Keith Bullock back <laughs> with more comments. We'll get uh, the pitching lines for the Mets and the Dodgers coming up. <laughs> full service here. Full, full we'll, we'll do it all. This is Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. Final segment. Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Keith Bullock getting ready for the Mets. Yeah. Amy is going over her portfolio. Her weather report. (laughs) I'm looking at the weather. What's the weather supposed to be in Buffalo? It is supposed to be on Sunday. 37. No, it's going to be, be pretty nice. 67 and sunny. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful football day. Because back here, it's going to be in the 70s again over oh, the really? weekend. Yeah, going back. It's going to be quite nice. Quite nice. Yeah. It was frigid this morning, though. I ain't going to lie. Oh, yeah. I walked the dog today. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me go put these sweatpants on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Today was an open up the back door and let the dog run out kind of morning. Well, here's uh, some some <laughs> good news if you don't like to travel up north. Next year, we will play an AFC East team. Here? It will be here. Woohoo! So we will play the AFC East team that finishes in the same place that we finish in the AFC South. We'll do that in the NFC South. So that'll be the, the trade off there. Next year's away schedule is quite fun. Yes. Those are some good uh, places. Here's some good trips. Hmm. Houston, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Arizona. Mm-hmm. That's a good trip. That's a great trip. Denver. Great trip. Fantastic. Las Vegas. Never I'll been. be there. Never <laughs> been in that stadium. We haven't. That's the only place I was I've just been. there mm-hmm. for the Syracuse UNLV game. Is it cool? What would you think? It was cool. Okay. It was really cool. Yeah. And then San Francisco. Okay. And that's Solid. a great trip. Yeah. It's a long flight, but cool when you're there. Do it's your not wine Seattle. tasting. It's yeah. not Seattle. And then the away is the AFC North team that finishes in the like position in their division that we finish in the AFC South. So that could be a good trip. Well, um, Some of those I like better than others. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, or Cleveland. None of those sound good. I like Cin- <laughs> <laughs> I like Cincinnati, Yo, and I like Baltimore. I've never like- gone out on a Baltimore trip. I'm never. It's really nice. Pittsburgh, I did. It's nice. Because we had a night game there. I'm sure it is, but I didn't have time for that. I'm on a different wave because we usually played like either yeah. at night yeah. or in like the noon game. So the noon game, I don't care to go she no got crab. In- she crab soup or nothing. She got <laughs> engaged in Cincinnati. I did get that's engaged why she in Cincinnati, so that's kind of nice. She Go got back. out. She got out of the van. Notice anything? Yes. Okay, we I all didn't see. even say that. Yes, you did. I mean, no, was that I the didn't. last city in the schedule? And he just decided has to. Why would Cincinnati? Oh my gosh. I'll talk to I'll talk to Josh about that. No, Cincinnati's okay. Cincinnati, I have no complaints. Montgomery I think it's great. Better than Cleveland. Sorry, Cleveland. Much better. <laughs> we better leave now before <laughs> we Amy insults some anybody. City. <laughs> for Keith Bullock and Amy Wells, Mike Keith says thanks for listening. <laughs>